What's up YouTube, it's your boy Mylot Shorts again. Here on this edit, I'm gonna show you guys how to do um, an other retouching and color grading. Um, this video is uh, mainly for color grading because the image I shot was, it was not a portrait image, so um, the retouching was just um, a very minute one. So I'm gonna be doing basically color grading I posted this image on Instagram and many people loved it and asked me to do a video. So um, that's why I'm putting up this edit to show you guys how I color graded that image I put up on Instagram. You can also go check um, out my Instagram. The link is down in the description. And also if you want to go ahead and retouch this image with me, the link is also down in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment and share this video if you love it. So let's get started first thing drag your image and drop it into photoshop when you drag your image it opens um first things first i always like crop my image for instagram so you don't forget um to crop your image for instagram so instagram doesn't crop it for you and that's four by five make sure you go to your crop setting and choose four by five then place it the way you want it to be and then hit ok the image crops okay so um, what I'm gonna do basically, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do um, frequency separation using the array panel, the retouching academy panel. That's what I use basically for um, all my um, retouching, both my frequency separation because it actually facilitates my work. You know, um, panels doesn't really make you a better retoucher. So my radius is three and high pass is three. Um, I use three because um, the image is not a portrait image, so. The, the texture I'm getting from 3 is okay for me. So um, remember you work on the correcting tone. For me, that's what works for me. Select your mixer brush, zoom in and uh, make sure that your mixer brush setting is um for me 1%, 20, 20, 20. And make sure that sample earlier is checked. And also that um check box, just make sure that it's, it's, it's looking that way, like my own is looking. So um, if it's not, that means you you have you have to make it look that way, or else it the effect of what you're doing will not be showing. So what I'm going to do, I'm I'm basically going to mix um the image. I'll mix. Um, I've already told you guys. Um, uh, one thing about frequency separation is make sure that you always maintain the areas you're mixing. Okay, like if I'm in the forehead, I'm going to maintain um the shadows and the highlights on the forehead okay i'm not going to paint my shadows into my highlights or do the other way around or paint my highlights into my shadows okay you just have to paint with precision and then mix according to the face of your model so you just have to follow the stroke of a face okay because if you don't do that you you will find out that at the end of the day after um after when you, after you're done with your frequency separation you find out that your image we will be looking better. I mean, there will not be a seamless transition between your highlights, your shadows, and midtones. So the the main reason of frequency separation is to create that seamless transition between your highlights, shadows, and midtone, and it will make your image look excellent. I mean, very lovable to every eye that sees it. Each time you you maintain those principles. Okay. So, um, like I said, this is what works for me. Most times when I retouch my images. Mm, that's a setting I love using, especially when I'm retouching a far image. I love um, using that um, custom frequency separation in the retouching acad academy panel. So it works for me, like whatever thing that works for you, I think you just have to stick with it. I think it's best you stick with whatever thing that works for you. Okay, so I'm in the hand, I'm trying to mix the hand and the legs also just make sure you you mix everything perfectly make sure you mix everything perfectly so it looks nice so um i'll create another layer for my hair i'm just going to be very subtle with that because i i wouldn't want to you know make the effect so much on the hair so i'll just you know brush over the hair quickly so it looks um smooth overall so close the frequency separation layer when you're done and then i want to i want to create another um layer 
um, a stamp visible layer when I'm done with this. And to create a stamp visible layer, you have to um, use Control Shift Alternate E. But before that, I just want to do um, a dungeon ball very quickly, you know, um, like the normal way how you do my dungeon ball, like very fast for me, you know, keep my flow 100 and opacity 100, and then paint in and go to blow, gash and blow, you know, blow it out. Just set my radius to a point that I'm very comfortable with what I'm seeing at a point where um, the effect seems to disappear. And then I'll just pull it back a bit to make sure that I get the, the dodge that I, I need in that particular area. Just to make sure that I get the dodge I need in that particular area. So I'll go ahead and reduce the opacity or increase the opacity depending. Okay, now I want to do my bond, then go to blow, gash and blow, you know, just find that perfect point for me. You know, not every image requires dodge and bone, but um, we will just have to look at your image and study it. If it's the one that requires dodging and burning, I mean, you go ahead and do it. Okay, so when I'm done, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer, control shift, alternate E. Command option shift E for Mac. So um that's how you create a stamp visible layer. So um you go I want I want to do the blur, but I just want to go to camera row first of all. After I'm done with my camera row, I'll then go to the blur and show you a very fast way that I, I do my blur. So you convert for smart filter, then go to your camera row. Now I'm gonna say something about smart filters. Um, let me let me tell you guys about smart filters. But before that, um, I needed to um, pop the colors of the greens. That's why I had to delete that layer to go to my um, my hue and saturation slider. So what I did is pulling the hues to hundred saturation hundred. Now the the slider there beneath your hue and saturation layer, the one I'm working on is it controls the fuzziness. It controls the areas that you want the effect to be applied in. So I had to increase it or decrease it depending on what I need. So remember, I after that, I just brought back my hue saturation to zero, everything zero, and then pull the saturation a bit up and then move the hue to the yellows because I want to I wanna get um, a bit of yellows on the background. Okay, so that's a slider. The slider is, um, is kind of, is I will just call it a fuzziness slider because it controls um, like the area you want your effect to be applied in and the area you, you don't want it to be applied in. So you can always drag it up or back, front um front and back, I mean to say, to get an overall effect. So I'll just go ahead and do my camera roll, filter color grading. I'll still have to go back to the adjustment layers for for my color grading, but I want to first of all do the camera roll. So I will head um let me tell you guys um about smart filters now. Like I said, smart filters helps you to go back to any effect that you've done already. Can I recap? When you apply a smart filter, if I'm done with this camera row, I can click back on the camera row showing um on my layer and then go back to adjust whatever thing I felt like I didn't do right. Okay, so I'm gonna move the sliders. You know to get that um perfect toning just what my watch my settings you can always play along with me in as much as you've downloaded this image and you know the color grading i'm doing that really is very nice for image with greeny background so if you have a greeny background and you want to do this kind of color grading i mean it's going to give you an excellent result you're going to be getting a fantastic result from it so just watch watch my settings and just put in the numbers the way you're seeing them is really gonna help. I mean, if you wanna um, get exactly what I'm getting, um, sometimes you just have to put it to slider front, um, up and front, um, you know, front and back to see um, what it gives you. So just gonna play with these. Um, that's the hue and saturation, the hue, saturation and luminance slider, the HSL slider. So the hue controls the colors, the saturation controls the intensity of the colors, the luminance controls the brightness of those colors. So if I'm if I'm 
on the um, red channel or the orange channel red channel or orange channel any channel that I am in I can always pull the slider front and back to determine the color um, I'm going to apply on that particular slider the luminance controls the brightness of that slider so the saturation controls the intensity of that slider so basically you can use the HSL slider for your color grading so I'll go to my curves and select the reds and then I'll pull down the reds to give me cyan um, on my shadows because you know red is opposite of cyan and both of them are complementary colors so the colors complement each other when you're having cyan on your background and you have on your shadows and you're having red on your highlights I mean it makes it as a great pop so um yellow and um blue are pretty much the same thing so i can always pull in the blues um in my shadows and then pull down the blues in my highlights to give me a yellow tint on my highlight so i just um put up the red you can always pull down the greens to get cyan and then pull up yeah the highlight to add greens to your highlight so i mean is something that you can always do you know play with colors you just have to understand the color wheel so you can always um you know do your color grading by using complementary colors to you know complement your image so if i'm adding red um if i'm adding blue to my shadows probably my highlight has to be yellow and if i'm adding cn to my shadows my highlight has to be red to add that pop to give me that pop so when i'm done with this just watch my settings i'm going to save this um as a preset um and i'll put it up i'll put the link down in the description probably um the same link with the um image so you guys can download the preset and check it out but i wouldn't want you to get this i would still want you to try out you know collaborating this image yourself before you can you know, use the preset because i i achieved the colors that i worked on on instagram with not just the camera rod filter and also i used the adjustment layer to achieve my colors so that's basically what i i used i just had to brighten up the picture and to add some contrast by pulling in the highlight pulling up the highlights and then pulling down the shadows um a kind of um an s curve but not really an s curve you know just pretty much um yeah let's say let, let's just call it an s curve a semi s curve okay just um pulling those colors and add some you know um a bit saturation to the colors and then the luminance controls the brightness i mean this is something you can always do with your image you know play with the sliders to see what you're getting okay but just understand the rules of colors right rgb equals to cmy rgb equals to cmy so when you apply them you get perfect results fantastic results believe me so just follow my styles okay follow my styles and you will get this right so after now i'll move to i'll move to the adjustment layers to add some more pop to the colors and i love working with a color balance most times with a selective color but um in this edit i think what i used what i used actually was just the color balance for from the adjustment layer so i i had to create um a stamp visible layer because i want to do my blur Control shift alternate e when you're done with your camera draw just click Control shift alternate e so i just remember that i want to save this as a preset so so you guys can have it as you download you know um, as you download the image so you can also um as well download the preset okay so i'm um, i'm trying to see i'm trying to name it you know so i can actually remember the name of the preset so i guess i will have to use the name of the model to you know 
to name the presets so I can always remember. Yeah, so I think that's my lot shorts, other Queen Mark, I don't know. <laughs> but that was what I typed actually. So I want to do my blur. <laughs> this is it's funny, right? But it's, it's um, another way that I do my blur. I'll first of all, create a stand visible layer, Control Shift, Alternate E, Convert for Smart Filter, and then go to my blur, Gaussian Blur. So um, set the radius to a point that I'm okay with it and then hit okay. Now click on the layer mask. That's your layer mask down there. Your layer mask, the one that looks like a camera. Um, yeah, there, click on the layer mask. Then make sure that your brush is selected, normal brush, and make sure that the foreground color is black because you're trying to take away the effect. So press X to toggle between your foreground and your background and press D for default. If your background of or, or your foreground color is having another color so i'm going to just take take it easy um make the brush size small and paint away the places i don't want the blur effect to be in i mean <laughs> it's a pretty way of doing your blur because i didn't feel like i wanted to you know um use um you know mask the image using the selection tool or any of those tools, the pen tool or the polygon or lasso tool. I just felt like using the layer mask to, you know, do my blur. I mean, it's very fast for me. And besides, um, I, I, I kind of wanted it this way. So it's not, it's not a deal breaker. You can always do whatever thing that works for you. But for this image, I felt like, yes, I just needed to do a very fast one. Even the one I posted on Instagram, that was the way I did it. I had to just mask out but you have to zoom in okay zoom in to your image i just want to re i'll reduce the flow so so i can actually um to around 12 percent so i can actually mask out the other areas okay just to create that um tilt shift effect look and then clean the blur effect from the trees um i'll go to my color balance to color grade the image now the shadows i want red in the shadow so i'm pulling it back now i'm gonna pull in uh, magenta to the shadows and then pulling blues to the shadows i mean you can see the effect so i'll go to my mid-tones and i feel like i want to add um a bit greens to my mid-tones and then add maybe probably yellow because mid-tones are still affected or mommy highlights are parts of the of mid tone so just um go to the highlights and then add add um a bit red green you know just play with that slider the shadows i think i need more of red in the shadows and more of um magenta in the shadows and more of blue in the shadows so i mean that's what you you have to you know do play with those sliders and understand how it works for you so basically i'm okay with that i'm just going to drag off this image and then mask because i want to i'm going to drag up the curves adjustment layer not the image actually <laughs> then um, i press ctrl i to invert the layer mask and then use um a white a white foreground my foreground color is white flow 100 and paint in the models to apply some you know um light to, to her face just want to brighten up her face and her body so you know it's always doing what is working for you best that's what i've always emphasized so guys on um, this on um, the end of this tutorial you know don't forget to subscribe and um like probably i forgot one thing i want to add some light effect so i selected an empty layer then change my foreground color to a kind of sun rays color yellow and then make your brush big okay hit on that place and then change the blend mode to screen press ctrl t for the transformation tool to transform it so transform it to a point that you think you, you're okay with it and then um blow it out you can always blow it out and um, when you think that the effect is too much you you can always reduce the opacity opacity is your friend i've always been saying it opacity is your friend you can always reduce your opacity if you think the effect of what you've done overall is too much so guys um i think um 
I've come to the end of this video. So you guys should um, not forget to, you know, like, comment, share this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay. Um, I'll see you guys on the next one. You guys are doing well. I really appreciate you guys. For those that have subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate. If you're yet to subscribe, please do all to subscribe because it's good. you're going to be encouraging this channel. So thank you guys. I really appreciate. You know, play with those things the way you want them to be. I mean, is your is your edit. Thank you so much for joining the channel. I really appreciate. Thank you guys. That's overall before and after. So you can see um, tons and tons of different. It makes tons and tons of different. I mean, check it out. So that's how I color graded that image. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you on this one. See you on the next one. I'm just playing around with the image, <laughs> trying to take away the um, sun rays effect from my face. Yeah, I know I've said it. See you on the next one. And yet I'm going to do another thing. See you on the next one. But this is the final one. <laughs> So I'm done. Nothing. Nothing. I'm not doing anything again. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining my channel. I'm just trying to be funny today. <laughs> you don't mind me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.